Hey, I'm Casey, and behind the camera is Lana, and we are Class C Broads. Today we are winterizing our 2019 Jayco Greyhawk 31F, and we're going to show you two methods to do that. One using an air compressor with RV antifreeze in the traps, and one just using the RV antifreeze throughout the plumbing system. Cause we're Class C To start this process, I'm going to list off what you need for each method. So if you're going to do the compressor method only, you need a blowout adapter like this and we'll put a link in the description below to all of the accessories that we're showing you today. You'll need a compressor that you can adjust the PSI on. You'll also need, of course, RV antifreeze, probably about a gallon. This is just to go in the P-traps after we're done blowing up the lines. You'll need your wrench for your inline water filter and you'll probably make a mess taking that off so you'll need a towel. For the antifreeze method you'll need some of the same things. You will need RV antifreeze but you'll probably need two to three gallons. You'll still need your inline filter wrench. You'll still need a towel because you'll still make a mess. You also need needle nose pliers to flip the screen in your city water connection inlet. And you need a hose like this that probably came with your RV to suction the antifreeze into your plumbing. So the first thing that we're gonna do is drain our hot water heater. We do not have a hot water heater with an anode rod, but if you did, it, it's the same method. Um, make sure that the water in the hot water heater is not hot that you've turned off your hot water heater at least a day before. So we want to um, open the pressure relief valve and then I have a little attachment here because this is too hard to get to so I added this attachment and that's how we're going to drain everything. While we're doing that we can open our low point drain um, on the RV so that we can get any water out of the freshwater tank. And we also have two other low point drains that I'll show you. Come on. So this is the low point drain for the freshwater tank and we need to, to turn that, open that up and let the water come out of there. There's also two other low point drains and they're under here and if you come in you can see they're marked low point drain and we're going to open those guys up too. Show underneath. You also want to make sure that you empty your gray and black tanks so that they don't freeze. That would be gross. Poop sickles. So once the water has finished draining out of the water heater, you want to shut that and shut your pressure valve. We'll close this back up and we'll go inside and we will bypass the water heater. So the next step is to find your water heater shutoffs and ours are under our refrigerator. So we're gonna go in there and bypass the water heater. There are three valves. As you can see right now, it is not bypassed. You see the water coming through here into the water heater and then back out. What we want to do is flip them all. So we're going to flip this to turn it off, this to turn it off, and this to turn it into the bypass. So now the water will route itself back out without hitting the water heater. If you are only doing the air method, you also need to get the water out of your pump. So we're going to turn the pump on for probably 10 to 15 seconds and run some water. The next step is to locate the inline water filter and remove it and dump the water. So ours is out here in our wet bay. It's tucked way back here. You 
use that handy dandy water filter wrench to loosen that up. And this is where you might need your towel because it's full of water. I try to catch as much of it as possible, but as you can see, it's still going to make a mess. So if you have a water filter in there, you want to take it out. And you also want to empty out any of the water. We don't have a water filter in there, so there's nothing to do there. But throw it away, get a new one for next year. Then you replace this and you're done with that. going to start the um, process of blowing out the water lines and again you, you don't have to do this you can do a combination of this and the RV antifreeze you can just do this with the antifreeze and the p-traps um, it's whatever you feel comfortable with we're doing this you know to make sure we get as much water out of the lines as we possibly can um, and to show you guys how to do it so this is the adapter and you're going to attach it to your city water connection. One of the things you want to make sure of is that on your compressor you set the pressure between around 30 to 40 psi. You really don't want to go any higher. You're just trying to blow out the water and you don't want to hurt your, your plumbing. So next we connect. Now that everything's hooked up, we're going to turn on the compressor and go inside and open up the faucets. Once you can put your hand under there without any water coming out onto your hand, then you're good to go. We're not yet there, as you can see. Make sure you do both sides hot and cold of every plumbing fixture that you have, including the outside shower. So if you're just doing the air method, you are almost done. You need to add the good pink stuff to all of your P traps in order to keep them nice and wet during the winter time. We will show you that step at the end because you also need to do the same thing when you're putting the RV antifreeze throughout the plumbing. Now would be a good time to ask you to like and subscribe. We are switching to the antifreeze method now and the steps are exactly the same up to where you hook something into the city water connection. So instead of hooking up your compressor, we're gonna hook up the tubing and suck the antifreeze through the system. So the next thing we wanna do is pull the screen out of the water inlet, the city water connection. And we wanna flip it around so that the pointy part is pointed inwards. There's a check valve right here that a lot of times you can't get the RV to suction in the antifreeze without turning this around so that it pushes against that. To allow the antifreeze to get into the system, you need to switch your valves to two and to four, which is sanitized winterized lines. So we're gonna close the low point drains. and hook up our hose. Stick this hose all the way down in there, set it up here, and we're gonna turn on the water pump. Now, we gotta go inside and start turning on faucets. You wanna do hot and cold on every fixture and flush the toilet as well until all the pink comes out. At this point, since we're the furthest away, we need to check to make sure how much antifreeze has gone through there. We may be out already. 
it's always good to have a helper for this step because getting the antifreeze to the furthest sink uh, usually takes up about a whole gallon and you'll have to switch it out. Once we have everything pink, turn off the pump and disconnect the hose and then we'll go inside and we'll put the pink stuff down all of the P-traps. So the last step would be to take your screen out and flip it back around so you don't forget. So a couple things that need to be mentioned here. There are still other things to do to winterize the RV. You need to make sure that the propane's off and that all your appliances are off. Um, with the battery, there are a few things that you could do. You could take the battery out or put it on a battery tender trickle charger. Uh, what we do is we just leave the RV plugged in to charge the battery. We don't have anything else on. Um, so it's not like it's taking up a bunch of power. Um, I think that's about it and I'm not gonna say whether you're on the road or on the web because obviously it's time for us not to be on the road if we're winterizing so just stay classy <laughs>